All right, so one thing I wanted to also cover was um, immersive view uh, that's coming to Maps. Um, this is something that's based on some really, really cool technology that I wanted to go over because I'm personally a huge nerd for it. So uh, immersive maps combine street view stuff with also all of the satellite footage in, able, in order to try to create uh, a, a model, basically, of reality that you can look through and also use for various applications. So one of the more interesting ones was identifying where you are. Um, and have you have I showed you live view and how much I like that? Yeah, I hate it because I get disoriented and I look at my phone and then I walk into stuff. But yeah, you can basically... It's, how? It's the camera's view. I'm just like, ooh, this is really cool. And then wake oh, crap. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so live view is something, and I'll go over here, that lets you pull up the uh, camera of your phone and identify where you are by looking for um, visual identifiers. So the problem is kind of illustrated here. When you're in a city, GPS bounces off of the facades of buildings, and these signals are no longer as accurate as they are in an open area. So if you are trying to get a good location and you're receiving a bunch of bounced GPS signals, it's going to be really difficult for the onboard computer to figure out where you are with any accuracy. And this is a big problem for trying to figure out whether you're going one way or another way um, when you've got maps open. I don't know if you've ever experienced like you'll open maps when you're in a dense city with like big buildings and stuff and you'll try to start going in a direction and it will have no idea which direction you're going in. That's because the GPS signals are being shredded and scrambled by all the buildings around you and they're making no sense to the computer that's trying to calculate your exact position. So Google had an interesting idea where they're like, hey, we've been paying these guys to drive around, you know, the, the country, you know, well, I guess the world for, you know, a really long time now. We have all this footage of what stuff looks like. Would it be possible for us to bring up a camera and start using machine learning to visually identify different parts of buildings and other things to exactly determine where I am within this model. So now that they have this kind of immersive model of, of what cities look like, they can visually identify where you are in seconds. And that is really cool if you are, for example, somewhere you've never been before. So I uh, got to use this in Norway when I was there for the first time and had no idea where I was most of the time. You would be able to just bring up your phone and it would visually identify where you were just by looking around and uh, seeing different things. Now, of course, this is more difficult than it sounds like because what about trees? Trees change all the time uh, with wind, they change with seasons, and this can make it so that even a relatively accurate position might be completely obfuscated by objects that change. So part of training this model was also figuring out what things change and what things are more permanent. So you can get a location that is not disrupted by, for example, the leaves suddenly changing colors and the machine learning process no longer recognizing it from earlier photos. So um, this has been a fascinating way of learning about the way that imaging and uh, a camera can be used to pinpoint your location much more precisely than GPS. So if you haven't tried out this feature, um, it's really, really cool. And I'm interested in the way that it'll be used in the future to do other sorts of augmented reality stuff. As you can see in their demo, it allows you to go to uh, landmarks in Tokyo and ignore them while you fight dragons and their robot companions. So a great way of getting uh, kids to go to famous places and then completely ignore them and instead stare through their screen. I nice. mean, arguably, this is much more interesting, I guess, than just looking at this building. But um, yeah, so one really cool thing is this is being offered as a API. So it's something that developers can access in order to use within applications. Um, and that means that it's much easier to like project things over it, like this dragon, I guess, or also use positioning in order to find out where someone is. So um, really, really an interesting model of reality that, got, that Google has built in order to identify where you are in any possible place in the city just from a couple of images. That's really cool. Yeah, um, slash a little bit creepy. The thought that somebody accessing your phone's camera could identify where you are just as easily as accessing like your GPS location um, is, a, is a little bit spooky. Because just catching a couple frames of a building right next to you would be enough for this API to figure out where you are. That correlated with like all the other data Google has on you. Yeah, I mean, of course, <laughs> of course. But yeah, it's just very strange that now, like if you just happen to catch like part of a street, that could be enough for this API to identify precisely where you are. Yeah. It's all interesting because right. we've also seen um, more analog or, I guess, primitive ways of doing this with like a GPS. I know that was a thing for a while where mm. you could determine the location by also profiling Wi-Fi networks around you or devices around you and 
Um, usually those will be tied to like a GPS location or something like that. And you can use that to like try lateralize the location of a, a of a device that's within those coordinates or within that bound. Yeah, so it used to take GPS, a GPS units like a good like th like two to five, sometimes eight minutes to start up because they didn't have the assistance of being able to query for the relative location, which is basically figured out via exactly what you just said, right. taking all the nearby Wi-Fi networks and then submitting them to an API. And then that, that API says, based on the signal strengths of these known, known networks that are in a position that we're aware of, this is where you are. And that's why your GPS using a GPS or assisted GPS is able to find your location so precisely, so quickly. Um, so yeah, the, the ability to then use another factor to identify where you are is pretty crazy because it's just getting easier and easier to geolocate someone provided you know a little bit about the surrounding environment, be it wireless or in this case, visual. Yeah, it's scary how much different technologies are becoming integrated and how it's able to be used for like position tracking stuff that accurately. I don't have the article pulled up, but I was reading an interesting thing about um, the new model of like the internet and how everything's going to work with like 5G and also like how much more accurate, how much more accurate positioning is going to become like even within like warehousing and stuff like that, just because mm -hmm. of IoT devices or other small scale devices that are able to very accurately determine their position in space.